Hello and welcome to this video on the instantiation typing rule in the Hindley Milner type system. This is part of a mini sub series on the Hindley Milner typing rules, which is part of a wider Hindley Milner series. If you haven't watched the previous videos in order, I'd recommend you do so. In some of those previous videos in the wider series, we've looked at instantiation, which is where if we have some polytype uh, sigma 1, which is uh, more general than some polytype sigma 2, an expression of type sigma 2 can be used where one of type sigma 1 is needed. As an example, where we have this, where we wanted to map the identity function over an array of numbers. So for example, we're doing map ID and then just an array with one element, the number one, two, three. So if we start with this map ID, what we've got there is that we've got an identity function being mapped over a list. And so we haven't really introduced any type constraints. It just needs to be a list of anything. So maybe what we're expecting next is to get a list of anything. So for all types, uh, for all alpha, uh, we have a list of alphas, right? For all types, we have a list of that type. But then what we actually find when we move on to the, the list, well, we find it's a list of integers, right? And so we have to then consider, does this match our type constraint or does this match our type that we're expecting, where we, we're expecting for all alpha list of alphas? Is list int of that form? And well, it is, yeah, because for all alpha list alpha is more general, uh, a more general version of list int, right? Because we've kind of specified that this alpha is this an int in this specific case. And so that's basically what the instantiation rule allows us to do. Written out in simple form, here is what it looks like. Again, like previous videos, let's break it down. So we've got some expressions, these E's. We've got some types like sigma A and sigma B. And we've got some assignments. So E has type sigma A, and then some judgment E has type sigma B. If you want now, maybe pause and try and read through the rule yourself. You've seen that done a few times. Otherwise, I'm going to go through and read it. What the rule is, is we've got an if-then setup, as with all the rules, where if the premise holds, then the conclusion will hold. And so reading through it, well, actually, it's kind of a simple one to read through because uh, we've just got the context and an assignment. So if from the context gamma, it follows that expression E has type sigma A. And... We've got this other part of the, of the premise. We're saying if sigma a is more general than sigma b, right? That's what that more general relation was. There's a video on that as well if you look up uh, for type order. So sigma a is more general than sigma b. Then from the context, it follows that e has type sigma b. I don't have a particular intuition for this in the sense that, you know, in previous videos, we've looked at trying to almost simplify down this text, but it's already pretty short and already kind of in its most core form. So maybe just pause and think, does this make sense to you? Does this match your understanding of instantiation? So for example, you can think back to the for all alpha list alpha example, where we've got our function is expecting this list of uh, alphas, right? So our sigma a is for all alpha list of alphas. And that is a more general type than list of int. So sigma a is more general than sigma b. And so we can say, well, where we've got this function from for all alpha list of alphas, we can actually say, well, it's also a function for, for list of ints, right? Where we're making it more specific. We're saying that you know, this, this type is more general, so we can use a more specific type. Let's see a similar practical example where we have a context uh, with two assignments. The first being reverse has type for all alpha list of alphas to list of alphas. So this is kind of like our map ID function. Uh, again, it's taking in some list and returning back a list. In this case, we can imagine maybe it's reversing the order of the elements, although the type of that list doesn't really change if we've just reversed the order. So we've got a list of integers, and then we're flipping that list of integers around, but it works for any list. So it could be a list of strings, a list of balls, a list of something. But in this case, we have ages as well, which is a list of integers. So we've got an assignment reverse, for all alpha, list of alphas to list of alphas, and ages has type list of int. And we'll ask the question, what is the type of reverse ages given this context? And again, let's write that as symbol form. So from the context gamma, it follows that reverse ages has some type. I'm not sure what it is yet. And in this case, I'm just going to show you the entire type proof on the next screen. So pause if you want to try and work it out, figure out maybe how to use the instantiation rule. Give it a go, right? Even if you're wrong, I mean, you can see from the next screen what you get and see if it matches. So let's see that proof. It looks something like this. 
So at the bottom, we've got reverse ages, um, which I'm just going to tell you the type of is list int. And there we use the application rule, right? Because reverse is a function and ages is its argument. So we have then reverse and ages to prove the type of. And we want to prove the type of reverse. So I'm going to ignore the thing on the right for now. I've put that down as an asterisk on the bottom just because we're quite uh, tight for space here. The thing on the left, we've got to prove reverse has type list of int to list of int. But actually, if we look at our variables, right, we could use our var rule, but var doesn't give us the right result, right? Because we're at var actually tells us that reverse has type for all alpha list of alphas uh, to list of alphas is in the context, but not that list of integers to list of integers is in the context. That's not the type of, of reverse in the context. So what we have to do is instantiate it with a more specific type, right? So if we narrow down on that rule, you can see the rule we've applied here is, well, we know reverse has type for all alpha, list of alphas to list of alphas. So that's the top left of the rule. That's just from our context. And we also know, based on how we, we define type order and that kind of stuff, so that's the top right-hand side, we know that for all alpha, list of alphas to list of alphas is more general than list of ints to list of ints because there's a substitution that can map the for all bound type variables there. And so given that we have these two as the premise, we can then get to the conclusion by the instantiation rule, which is from the context gamma, it follows that reverse has type list of int to list of int, which makes the rest of the proof work. So you might wonder, well, how do I know when just to use the var rule? How do I know to use just the instantiation rule? When do I need to insert it? And that is, you know, if you're writing type proofs manually, you've got to figure it out for yourself. But what the hindley milner algorithms that we'll get to later, so like algorithm W, algorithm M, etc., do is give you an order to apply these rules. I mean, not quite, right? They don't just say apply this rule, then this rule, but effectively they're a process by which these rules are applied in the right order. And again, we'll get to that later. In the next video, we'll look at generalization, which is kind of doing similar stuff, but in the reverse, when we've got these uh, free type variables floating around. And that will conclude our series on the Hindley-Milner typing rules. See you in the next one.